Windows Vista introduced a very different folder structure than what we were used to back with Windows XP. This folder structure continues on in Windows 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the important folders both on Windows Vista and 7. They're the same for both of those. So let's dive into my system and poke around a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is we're just going to go into computer and I'm going to open up my C drive because that's where I have Windows installed. Now, some of the stuff is going to be hidden so I'm going to go into Folder and Search Options, and under View, I'm going to say Show Hidden Files, Folders, and that sort of thing. And I'll hide the, I'll unhide the protected operating system files as well. So let's just go ahead and hit OK. All right, now we see a lot of hidden stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, here's good old Windows. Windows is the actual Windows operating system itself. There's a lot of really, really important folders in here, but the A Plus wants me to point out some very specific ones. In particular, here's our fonts. So any fonts that I might have installed on the system are all there. We also have System32. System32 has got all of the primary dynamic link libraries, the most important utilities. If I was going to keep one folder on a Windows system, it would be this folder. We also have offline web pages. If there's any web pages that I'm running and I want to be able to look at them when I'm not hooked to the internet, I can store them all here. And then everybody's favorite, good old temp. I need administrative access to get into here. And in here are all the kinds of temporary files from installations, from all kinds of different stuff that for the most part can probably be deleted. And these build up over time and then we delete them. Okay, so that's the Windows folder. Let's go back to the root of the C drive and let's talk about a few things. Now, first of all, you'll see documents and settings here. That's not real documents and settings. That folder is simply there as backward compatibility with Windows XP applications that are looking for that. What we, when we're looking for the individual users, we go to the users folder. Now, underneath all of these users folders, we're going to have, I actually have two users installed, Fred and Mike. Then we also have, the, by default, a public user, and this is what's exposed for anybody who wants to access the machine uh, in the public. And then we have default. Default, I'll go ahead and open this one because it's as good an example as any. Default is if I don't specify things, like for example, my desktop wallpaper or my screensaver or anything like that, it's all gonna take from default. But as we look under here, we can actually see here's the desktop, here's my documents, downloads, your Internet Explorer favorites, music, everything that you'd expect to be underneath one particular user is all stored right here. Now, going back to the C drive, I want you to take a look right here. Do you see where it says Program Files and then Program Files x86? I know instantly that this is a 64-bit system because this particular folder is open right here. 64-bit versions of Windows can run 32-bit applications without any problem at all. They just like to separate them. So Program Files x86 is where all my 32-bit programs are installed. And regular Program Files, this is where all my 64-bit programs are installed. The a exams really push you knowing where these important folders are. And you really should. It's important to understand where things are being stored so you can find them.